Welcome back to Issachar Forum, a prophetic think tank. My name is Les Lawrence with Elijah Vision Ministries. Glad to have you with us. And uh, I'd just like to point out this little graphic I have off of the screen. I'm, it's always been one of my favorite Ben Franklin quotes. If you would not be forgotten, either write something worth reading or do things worth the writing. Uh, and that's worth meditating about. Well, let's begin with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for the fact that you are so faithful to keep your promises and that we can depend on what you've said, Lord. We, When we pray to you, we want to pray according to your promises because then our prayers will be answered. We just pray things that we want out of our own hearts or desires or lusts that, that uh, we can easily pray amiss. But if we pray what you promised you would do, you'll do it. And we thank you for that reality, Lord. We do pray for the peace of Jerusalem. You told us to do that, so we know you'll answer that prayer. And Lord, we also pray that the land would be uh, given to Israel to possess another one of your promises. If people were praying for the Palestinians to be given the land, their prayers won't be answered because you've already determined beforehand uh, who gets the land. So we thank you, for, Lord, for your faithfulness. We also pray for rain as we begin to enter into the rainy season in the next few weeks. Let your rains come, Lord, to re re refresh your land and your crops and the wildflowers and all of your abundant provision. Thank you, Father. In the name of your Son, Yeshua ben Yehovah, Jesus, the Son of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, let's get into the news. I always start with my blog, ElishaVision.com. That's Elisha with an S, ElishaVision.com. And you'll find my commentary there. I do one or two blogs every week. I did one this week called, Exactly What is Being Rebuilt in Jerusalem? I love this painting that I found in the old city of Jerusalem years ago. I managed to get two copies of this uh, painting, uh, which shows the Temple Mount with uh, mist rather than any buildings. And I think that really gives a great uh, example of the presence of God, the glory cloud of God. Uh, and uh, the word there in Hebrew is east, uh, Masrat, I think, or Masrot. Anyway, it means east, and uh, it means the Messiah is coming. Everybody's looking for the Messiah. Jews and Christians who believe the Bible are looking for the Messiah to come. Well, my question is, the question of the article was exactly what is being rebuilt in Jerusalem, and I make the point, is it is it the tabernacle of Moses that's going to be restored? Is it the temple of Solomon or the temple of Herod that's going to be restored? Actually, the Bible answers that. Uh, it's very clear. Uh, from Amos 9, On that day I will raise up the tabernacle of David, which has fallen down, and repair its damages. I will raise up its ruins and rebuild it as in the days of old, that they may possess the remnant of Edom and all the Gentiles who are called by my name, says Jehovah, who does this thing. And then the verse a little further down is from Acts, where the verse, uh, the same verse from Amos is basically quoted in the book of Acts about rebuilding the Tabernacle of David. And I explained that the Tabernacle of David is an actual historical uh, fact that in between the Tabernacle of Moses, after the Ark of the Covenant was stolen by the Philistines, they didn't have, they couldn't, they had no Ark <laughs> in the Tabernacle. But when it was recovered by David, uh, he didn't put it back in the, in the Tabernacle of Moses. He put it on the threshing floor of Obed that he had purchased and put a big tent up and brought in uh, singers and musicians and dancers, and they could come right in before the presence of the Lord in the ark. And uh, it was an astounding uh, series of or time period, because it lasted about 38 or 40 years during David's reign, where the people could come into the presence of God. Then when Solomon's temple was built, and went back into the Holy of Holies, and nobody could go in except the high priest. And so is God rebuilding Moses' tabernacle or Solomon's temple? No, he's rebuilding the tabernacle of David because God wants fellowship with us. He wants us to come right into his presence with worship and singing and dancing and praise and loving him. Hallelujah. So and then one other thing you should notice there in that is that it actually also says that it, part of that purpose is that the Gentiles could come in as well. What an astounding thing. We think that's a New Testament concept, the the uh, one new man. But actually, here it is in in uh, Amos nine, that the uh, 
all the Gentiles, not all the Gentiles, but all the Gentiles who are called by my name. And so there is a clear uh, prophetic word in Amos 9 about Gentiles coming in and being grafted into Israel. Hallelujah. Well, let it, let it be done, Lord. We are uh, on your side with that. Hallelujah. Well, some of the news now. Let's get into it. Netanyahu vows to apply sovereignty over the Jordan Valley. It's a big news thing this week. Uh, and uh, some people uh, accuse Netanyahu of using, saying that just for political purposes because the election's coming up Tuesday and we really need to be in prayer that God's man will be chosen. And I personally believe that happens to be Netanyahu, but, but I, uh, I'm submitted to God, whoever he chooses. He's the one who removes kings and raises up kings, so we trust him. But anyway, this is a big deal, uh, and, but it's not out of character with Netanyahu. It's not just a political ploy. Uh, he's been saying for a long time that that's what he intends to do, extend sovereignty, and, and, uh, and so I don't believe it's fake at all. I believe it's true. And uh, in uh, Israel Today, it says, uh, is Netanyahu's annexation plan trick or treat? Um, if he's reelected next week, Netanyahu is poised to finally do something most agree Israelis agreed to do decades ago. There he is with a map showing what uh, his intentions are. And I believe he is going to do it. Uh, and in fact, just today, the cabinet met in the Jordan Valley and approved a new town in the Jordan Valley, a new Israeli town uh, called uh, Meviot Jericho, like Jericho. Uh, but it's a Jewish town down not far from Jericho, and, and that was approved today and will be enacted after the election, of course. And uh, other news this week, uh, Trump and Netanyahu discussed mutual defense pact ahead of Israeli election. And uh, that's simply a one-to-one -one agreement that, that uh, Israel and the U.S. could join together and, and agree to mutually defend one another if attacked. Kind of like NATO, which is many nations, but this would be a a bilateral agreement, uh, and, and probably the reason that Netanyahu even, excuse me, uh, President Trump mentioned that this week, uh, he, he made a public uh, statement about it, is uh, really kind of a subtle indication that he would like to continue working with Netanyahu. He actually said, uh, we, can, we, we hope to conclude this after the election, <laughs> in kind of a wink-wink kind of a thing. People uh, always... Uh, you know, jump on Trump for saying he's trying to interfere in Israel's elections, but and he can't just uh, you know come out and endorse Netanyahu. So this is about the best he could do. Uh, but remember that when Obama was president, he actually sent his whole campaign team over there to work against Netanyahu directly and openly. Supplied, I think, it was one hundred and fifty thousand dollars into the anti-Netanyahu campaign. So. Don't be critical of Netanyahu or of uh, Trump making a few, few statements like this. Uh, all right, continuing on, um, there's a great verse from Esther 8:17, and uh, in the and I'm putting taking this drawing us out of the story of Esther, and the Persian Empire, uh, you know, around the time of King Cyrus, way back there in history. Uh, here's at the end of that story. It says, and in every province and in every city. Whether soever the king's commandment and his decree came, the Jews had joy and gladness. This is after they had the victory. A feast and a good day. Of course, the feast of Purim, Purim or Purim, uh, commemorates that. It's not a not one of the feasts of Jehovah, but it's a uh, annual feast that uh, Jews celebrate. But the last part of this, uh, Esther eight seventeen says, and many of the people of the land became Jews. For the fear of the Jews fell upon them. Wow. So even then, Persians, or people from other nations that were in Persia at the time, became Jews. Uh, again, a hint of the one new man that is God's ultimate intention for Jew and Gentile to be joined together uh, and be grafted into the olive tree of Israel. Hallelujah. Uh, and then here's one more verse uh, that I wanted to share today. Isaiah 52.10 Jehovah has made bare his holy arm in the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. And of course we know the salvation of our God, salvation, uh, is from the same word as the name of Yeshua, which means salvation. Uh, so they will see the Yeshua of our God. 
Hallelujah. The nations will see it. Well, uh, here's another news just the uh, last couple days. Killer drones attacked Saudi oil fields. This is my favorite cartoonist, of course, Yaakov Kirshen. And killer Shiite drones attack Saudi oil installations. This is not a joke, however. This actually happened. Here's a picture of the oil fields. Saudi Arabia shuts down about half of its oil output after drone strikes. And this was uh, uh, financed and supplied by Iran. Is the Houthi rebels, uh, but it was Iranian drones, and it really uh, it is a rather uh, world-shaking uh, event because five percent of the uh, er, of the world's oil is now curtailed because ten percent of it comes from this site, and uh, half of it is shut down. Now the good news is that uh, Saudi Arabia says they have enough reserves to keep the oil flowing. Number one and number two. They expect to be back online Monday, tomorrow. So uh, it'll only be two or three days that they're off. So it's not quite as bad as it could have been. But the other implication is the possibility of expanding the war because Iran and Saudi Arabia have been at war with each other really through the proxies in, in, of the Houthis in Yemen and in Saudi Arabia and so forth. So that's something we really need to be in prayer about. Uh, meanwhile, the U.S. bombed an island in the Tigris River in Iraq uh, that was a nest of uh, ISIS. There were still ISIS people there, and uh, and they attacked this island. I don't know if this will actually be able to come in or not. Yeah, here we go. Maybe it will. <laughs> I'll talk about it as it's doing it. Uh, 80,000 pounds of bombs were dropped uh, in uh, the, on this island. Here's a picture of the island rather long island and you can see the length of it and uh, as the video goes I don't want to take too long for this but uh, yeah there you go you can see where the bombs are being dropped and eventually it gets most of the island uh, and this was uh, the US took credit for it here you see pictures of it from one end of the island where they were firing and dropping bombs on the other end of the island and uh, so it was there you go see it in the middle and everything Quite a quite a picture. So um, I'll stop it there and just get the idea. But uh, see if I can pause it. There we go. So uh, pretty serious uh, attack just this week. Eighty thousand pounds of U.S. bombs. Uh, so we're still going after ISIS. Uh, meanwhile, the uh, Times of Israel has a story. The Prime Minister draws fire from political revivals after rockets disrupt his campaign event. What they didn't point out is that it also disrupted the, uh, uh, the campaign event of Gantz, the, the opponent. The point is a couple rockets were shot into Ashkelon intentionally by Hamas during campaigning when both candidates were there. And uh, in the case of Netanyahu, uh, he, t he announced everybody that they needed to go into bomb shelters and they stopped his speech, they went into bomb shelters, came back out a few minutes later and finished his speech. So it wasn't such a big deal. Except that it does show that uh, Hamas is able to, uh, to uh, attack whenever they want to and, and hit general targets where they want to go. Now here's a big, uh, big news item here in the U.S. The Supreme Court allows broad enforcement of the Trump asylum rule. Uh, not only that particular rule, and, and the rule was simply that... Uh, that if people seeking asylum at the south, southwestern border, uh, if they came through another country, like from, if they came from Guatemala, for example, through Mexico, and, but wanted to get asylum in the U.S., they can't apply for asylum here until they have applied for asylum in Mexico. In other words, you can't just, if you're really escaping you know, for your life, getting into Mexico would be enough, you know, so it kind of puts the lie to what they're really trying to do. But the Supreme Court thing goes beyond that because it actually is beginning to uh, uh, come down on the, on the whole process where one uh, uh, renegade judge out in California or Oregon or someplace can make a ruling that applies to the entire nation. So the Supreme Court uh, will eventually probably come out right directly. And the, this vote was 7 to 2, so the Supreme Court would actually uh, revoke that uh, unilateral uh, extending of where a, where a circuit judge extends federal authority over the whole nation. That's just not constitutional. So, praise God that's being exposed. 
Meanwhile, uh, uh, this is another indication, another uh, hint about Trump helping Netanyahu. Uh, he says he's set to see Netanyahu as the next prime minister. Shows that the cartoon is uh, throwing a lifesaver to Bibi because he's sinking. Well, I don't think he is sinking, <laughs> as a matter of fact. And um, the polls, in fact, have uh, Netanyahu edging toward a majority uh, right-wing bloc. Uh, that's kind of good news. And this is not opening up here, but uh, this is from the Times of Israel. And I can't seem to get it to open. Let's see if I can re... I don't want to waste time on this. The point is that polls are showing that there's a good uh, a movement in the right direction for Netanyahu just, just over the last few days. Um, all right, that's not going to work. So we'll just go on to the next one. And... Uh, Here's another poll. 25% of Arab Israelis think Netanyahu should be prime minister. That would be a big thing if the, if the Arabs, some of the Arabs would vote for Netanyahu instead of the Arab parties. There are Arab parties in the Knesset. It uh, would be a shock to some of the leftists that say Israel doesn't have uh, uh, freedom of speech. But, but the point is 25% uh, of the Arabs actually like Netanyahu. So if a big chunk of Arabs voted for Netanyahu, that would put him over the top for sure. Uh, that's an interesting story there. Uh, here's a story from Israel Hayom. says, brace for the return of the Oslo coalition. Basically saying that uh, if the left were to win the election Tuesday, it would, then the left would be in control and it would be, they'd go back to the old Oslo Accords that have been complete failure from 1993 under Clinton and uh, Rabin and left-wing generals and so forth. And they were working together at that time with the Arab uh, parties. And uh, the question is, does this sound familiar? Because that's the coalition that's opposing Netanyahu at the present time. Um, here's an interesting statement from the left, citing voter apathy. And uh, says the leftist parties are warning of a potential wipeout. Leaders of the Democratic camp and Labor Gesher say Blue and White's efforts to take in their voters could cause the centrist alliance, or the left alliance, to win the battle but lose the war. And uh, I'm, I'm glad they're concerned because I believe that the Lord wants the right-wing parties to, the biblical-oriented parties to win. Uh, another story from Israel Today, Christian, uh, urge, Christians urge fellow Arabs not to vote for Arab parties. Now, this is a major uh, Arab leader uh, that's a Christian, but he's an Arab. And he's saying it's time to start building the bridges that will lead to a united society of Jew and Arab in the state of Israel in our home. And that reflects that other story that 25% of Arabs are pro-Netanyahu. So uh, we need to pray that the Arabs, many Arabs will vote for Netanyahu. Uh, here's a story, I just kind of threw it in here, but I want you to make sure you're aware of this, that black slavery exists today in Muslim-dominated African nations. And slavery, going back in history several hundred years, it was actually Muslims who enslaved black Africans and then shipped them to the United States, sold them, uh, to the slave traders who brought them to the United States. That's a connection that's not often uh, mentioned or talked about. So you need, to, And it's still happening today in Muslim nations. Uh, here's a good story in Israel today. The rabbi who saw the future. This is a rabbi back in the 1700s who actually t said that Christians would one day help restore Israel and come and work the fields and help with the crops and so forth. And that's actually happening. That's kind of a neat story. Uh, meanwhile, there was a an attempt to smear Israel just this week, uh, saying a story that's actually two years old, <laughs> that somebody planted uh, uh, electronic eavesdropping equipment trying to pick up phone calls from the White House. and But just this week, uh, Politico said, that was Israel, Israel did it, but it was based on three former senior uh, seniors in the White House, which means from the Obama administration. Present White House denies it completely, and in fact, President Trump actually said, uh, I don't believe that. No, I don't believe the Israelis are spying on us. So uh, the whole thing has been debunked. But as an attempt uh, to mess up Israel's election from here. And uh, of course, uh, John Bolton was uh, resigned from the government to, uh, this week. And uh, the cartoon is kind of cute, I thought. Man overboard, <laughs> John Bolton. And... Um, Here's another, I can't go into this in detail, my time's running out here, but God re is revealed in Ezekiel. 
my favorite cartoonist Yaakov Kurson says he used to be an, used to say he was an atheist, then he became an agnostic, uh, and now he says, uh, since I've been reading Ezekiel, I'm having a crisis of unbelief. <laughs> In other words, his unbelief. He's he's doubting his unbelief, uh, which is pretty cool. I think he now believes in God. I can't speak for him, but judging by his cartoons, I think he does. And uh, then just a one couple more stories here. The United Kingdom schools ban girls' skirts to become more inclusive for trans people, transgender people. My, my, my. Can't make this stuff up. And then finally, the tiny first temple seal impression was found with the name of a Bible era royal steward. That was just in the last uh, week or so, a couple weeks. Belonging to Adonaiu, royal steward. Um, from the 7th century BCE, the, which is the time of the first temple. And it was found in the area uh, where, our, when we were there in June, where we were, uh, we went to this place where, we, where you actually get to go through buckets of stuff. Well, that, it was found in one of those buckets, <laughs> just like we were there in June, and it was only it was just found a week or two ago at the uh, sifting site, uh, going through the material from David's uh, capital city, the, the city of David that's been excavated lately. Well, praise God. He's doing wonderful things. Thank you, Lord God, for your faithfulness to reveal your truth, your word, and to confirm it. And we pray, Lord, that, that uh, the Jews would recognize the Messiah and that Gentiles who don't know you would come to see that Yeshua is the Messiah of Israel and our Messiah. Thank you, Father God, Jehovah God. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. God bless you. Shalom, shalom.